Aloha. Please kokua and help us reach new viewers by subscribing to our HUOA YouTube page. Look for the red subscribe button on the bottom right. It's free. Your subscription supports our mission to share Uchinanchu Aloha around the world. Also, don't forget to give our videos a thumbs up. Mahalo and Yuta Surugutu Urige Sabina. Hi, 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 everyone. Hi, Karo. Hi, John. Welcome to Yuntaku Live, episode 54. 54 we're already. Second one in 2022. We're still caught up in the pandemic, uh, unfortunately, yeah. but I think it's getting better and better. Um, just so all of you know, here at the Okinawa Center, we are trying to open. Um, but we'll probably uh, open up on March 1st or in and around the week of March 1st. So all of you that are waiting to come back and get involved with the activities here, like Monday Crafters and some of the classes that we have here with Ichigo Ichi A, Sanchin, we'll start uh, bringing those back and, of course, uh, still maintain uh, activities under COVID policies. But let's get back to normal. Little by little, it'll be nice seeing each other, actually, right. in person. Well, what doesn't change is we got Linda Kamihara in the house. She's <laughs> watching from Sam's Club. And then Jenny. Jacob Higa, who's oh, yeah. normally here and helping uh, run the show. <laughs> He's busy studying for exams. Uh, at least that's what he said. So oh, uh, good luck on your exams, Jacob. Oh. <laughs> I saw Janine earlier from here. For, I don't know where she is, but she's in, she's in Kaneohe, so she should be close to, to where I am. Ah, uh, yes. And um, we're getting a lot of people saying hi. And, you know, always nice to hear from all of you because uh, that's what Yuntaku Live is for, is really to reach out to all of you. It started with, you know, the pandemic uh, hit us hard. And hopefully um, we've been able to keep in touch with so many of you, not only here in Hawaii, but also across the islands uh, and across the ocean. So um, like David Jones said earlier, our new president, uh, to like and subscribe on YouTube. And then also we have this new uh, super chat feature. And, you know, uh, it really provides another way for us to uh, or for you to help us out with donations. So. If you, on YouTube, right? On the chat. Um, on the chat with YouTube. So if you YouTube. see that and you're curious, you know, just uh, tap that. And of course, Penny Head Ebidu for all your contributions throughout the year, throughout the pandemic. Thank you. Thank you. But also, um, Karo, uh, yes. you know, I, I just want to mention real quick, uh, you know, people giving to HOA a lot, but Huyo La Lima, you know, are all women's Okinawa club. They've been really generous every year. They give out these grants to the cultural clubs. And this year, they had uh, quite a bit of grants that went out. And just so um, all of you know, especially our Gaino community, uh, these are some of, uh, you'll see this on our website, if you go to our website. Uh, well, let's see if I can see what we got. We had uh, cultural grants winners. Um, we had uh, Janice Shiro and Doreen Yamashiro. Uh, and they um, help with our our Shimokutubu, uh, Shino, Shimokutubu, Shimokutubu booth. Booth. and um, let's see, Jim Pukai, uh, one mm -hmm. of our dance schools, has airfare to Okinawa for research. And yeah. I Jim also Pukai, see Kohala Okinawa Kenjinkai. They have also airfare to the Havi Obon Festival, Festival in Kohala. Mm -hmm. Uh, oh, Lee, Lee. Lee Tonouchi, um, you know, here his girls are with Hawaii Okinawa Creative Arts and very active, uh, but he's publishing a Hawaii Okinawa anthology featuring the write writers of poetry and that prose. That should be interesting. Yeah. What um, else we got here? We also have Maui Okinawa Kenjinkai, 
um, with airfare for Cheryl Nakasone Sensei. Uh, oh, Ryukyu Kokomatsuri Daiko Hawaii. Um, apparently, I don't know if it's 2022 or if it was in 2021, um, the Okinawa 40th anniversary. Um, so so they, 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 they're going to utilize that money for, to, to travel to Okinawa for the celebration. So you can uh, find this on our HUA website. And, you know, something new for all our HUA members, uh, we're going to be slowly introducing to everyone is my HUOA. Uh, that will be, you know, have a lot of our clubs and groups be able to use a, a different platform for their meetings and uh, a lot of exciting, uh, you know, notices, events and whatnot, just like the one we're going to talk about tonight. So don't forget to visit our HUA website. Of course, we're all getting excited and hoping that, uh, you know, Sekai Uchinachu Taikai Worldwide Okinawa Festival will happen this year. Uh, Okinawa hopefully will make their final decision in April and let's keep our fingers crossed, right? Yes. Well, our uh, HUA website is www.huoa.org. Well, and here comes our, our, our donations. So thank you to Chris, Chris Uomura and David Jones, our president, Courtney Takara, our treasurer. Uh, so uh, thank you for uh, all these guys are our officers and they're helping us out. Hi, Amy. Say hi, everybody. Hi, so, you know, uh, we talk about the the pandemic and, and the, the hardships we went through. You know, um, Pat Miyashiro did a great job last year being our president again. Uh, you know, Lynn had to do it and then Pat. So uh, we wanted to play his thank you message that got a little garbled up during uh, DJ's installation banquet. So we're going to have everyone uh, enjoy Pat's outgoing message. Outside this year, the ease of what we're doing, Happy New Year 2023. We are all looking forward to having a great new beginning to try to get back to work while dealing with the COVID pandemic. It's going to show you to be here with you and drop it to the world and leave you here and do the rest of your technical process. And the ATS staff will give you this opportunity to serve you as your president of the Hawaii United Economic Association for 2021. It is with your support and understanding that I survived looking through all the meetings that you've missed. Little did I realize the awesome response you made in your family. I will always treasure the memories and wonderful support given to me by all of you. I will remember all the happy support that you gave me to make all of this happen. Today, we are proud to recognize the International of the Year awardees who have signed us to help the ATO and the respective clubs. Trying to the years past and going into the future. These individuals are the heart and soul of our organization and our work jobs. So, the location is as far as the team, team, and the teacher's school. Our hearts and love is one. We pray we hear the As we move on to 2022, we should embrace the team, team Fiji, meaning we can new hearts today. The first version of this meeting is. We collecting to our roots and each other for the future. The focus of next mission is we collecting, helping each other, feeling an even better sense of our community. We support the daily drivers and new president and the new students of our present year who will help to feed our city's future. And let us start for the new year. The support of the executive council, one of the workers, the daily groups, and the sensories. And the many community supporters are directly devoted to the success of the new HOA. And for that, we pray we have you. This pandemic has continued for the last two years, and we, as an organization, have to grow about that into new values. It has been a challenge to keep us to the new summer of new things close to it. I am very honored to have represented all of you as a political HOA president. I am thankful for all the support that I have received from all of you. Especially my new club and my family. This was truly an experience I will remember at times. We clearly hear the view. Looking forward to seeing all of you at 2022 Okinawa Tech Power in late October. Cheers. 
So he mentioned the Tuishiji uh, Abe Abe Jones theme for 2022, and uh, you know Dave and uh, DJ and they have a break tonight, but DJ is actually working hard behind the scenes. Yes, he is. Uh, that don't know uh, DJ is running the show tonight, so uh, thank you DJ for uh, coordinating behind the scenes tonight. So you know we want to get into our show. And it's going to be a really interesting show uh, about uh, an upcoming production that's going to happen this month, actually. In, uh, End of the month. Yeah. So um, before we bring on, uh, you know, our guests, our guests. Uh, we're going to give you a little trailer. So a trailer and a little taste of, of what you might see. Nice. So I'll let you go ahead and, and, and start. Uh, talk a little bit about uh, Yuki before we bring her on. Okay. Uh, yes. So today we'll have Yuki Shiroma. Um, she um, has a background of uh, 
dancing and teaching traditional Okinawan dance, but she also um, does, con uh, does uh, contemporary dance and she has her, her own company, Monkey Waterfall. Um, I can't say where and when I met Yuki, Yuki Sensei, but um, it must have been, yeah, when I got here, uh, maybe on the first days or some, oh, maybe we took, we took um, Sanshin classes together with Norma Sensei. Um, and we are Shiman too. We are both from, um, well, our ancestors come from Kitanakagusuku. So we are part of Kitanakagusuku Sonjinkai. So um, we met, uh, we meet in, at their Shinenenkais too. Um, but let's see, if, uh, let's bring Yuki Sensei and see if Wait, before what I'm we saying is on. true. Well, Wait, yes. before, before we bring her on, okay. uh, I want to give everyone just a little bit of a, a taste of uh, Yuki Sensei and and some of the other things that really uh, make up who she is. So uh, yeah, we have a little clip uh, that from her previous show. Oh, okay. Okay, well, for me, um, Okinawan dance came very late in my dance training, but for uh, many reasons, it opened up doors to my family, my ancestry, and a whole other community. But I kept the worlds separate for as long as I could. My modern, my Okinawan, different friends, different uh, audiences, and it was only after many years and uh, that different people had pointed out to me that because I had studied both for so long that something happens to your training, it goes deep. The essence of it goes very deep. And when you create, that creative pool is a mixture of all your experiences and you don't know often where it came from. So instead of talking about what I do in Okinawan dance and modern dance, I'm going to show you just a few short clips from uh, pieces that I have done. Uh, I think we're going to show them. But let me explain real quick because it's, it's, they're very short. Um, the first piece is called Uchinanu Chimugukuru, the Okinawan spirit. And it is, um, I played off of the the dancers entering with the female walk with that signature lifting of the foot. And um, then the second part is all male movements. And the masks are created by Michael Harada and they were based on the classical Okinawan female makeup. <laughs> um, the music was by Tuvan throat singers and a Bulgarian women's choir. But in the concert in January 22, it will be music from this incredible group. Um, the second piece was called Kunjang Sabakui, and it is about uh, the, it's a work song of the building of Shuri Castle. This song, uh, the recording of it is by uh, a popular women's uh, group called the Nenes. The mask is by Balinese carver, Nyoman Setiawan. Uh, and the last piece worked with Kenny in 2017 at a university main stage production. And uh, it was inspired by an auntie of mine who said the war never ended for us, that after the last battle of World War II and even now with the military presence in Okinawa, they're still fighting. Um, the being taken over by militarism. So they are feeling a little bit uh, like they have to get up and fight again, get up and rise again. So for my auntie, she said it's the resilience of the Okinawan people and also the bond between people and the strength of the community that is going to save them to be able to rise up again and again and again. So that was uh, the inspiration for Steel Rain. All of the dancers in the video are a combination of, of University of Hawaii dance students and some Okinawan dancers from the community. 
So, real quick, can we roll the video? Wow, impressive. So let's bring Sensei <laughs> Yuki Shiroma. Hi, Sai. <laughs> Hi, Tai Yuki Sensei. Hi, Tai. Thank you so much, Karo, John, DJ, for the invitation um, to be here tonight. We are so honored. Uh, you know, Yuntaku Live has been one of the platforms that has kept the community together. So thank you very much. In these challenging times, we feel so distant from everyone. And uh, I really appreciate this opportunity. So thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> We're excited. This is a long project you have here. <laughs> yes. Well, it started a long time ago and kept getting postponed and delayed and, and a number of uh, uh, challenges occurred along the way so we are finally um uh university of hawaii at manoa outreach college uh tim slaughter has uh, picked up the reins and is uh, presenting us along with monkey waterfall and um much help from national endowment and state foundation and so we're really thankful that uh this is going to actually happen in a few weeks, I hope, if everyone stays healthy. So, <laughs> oh, I'm sure it'll happen. You know, I've, <laughs> I've known you, Aro said she's known you a while. If she's known you a while, I've known you forever, I think, <laughs> because, uh, you know, I, I recall seeing Monkey Waterfall. I don't know if that was the actual uh, title yes. of the piece here at the Okinawan Center. And it was always so innovative, so interesting, I, I believe. Someone was on stilts, right? And yes. uh, again, waterfall. <laughs> all your, all your productions. I, I saw one over at the state, um, not the state capitol, but the state capitol building in downtown. And you know, mm -hmm. a lot of different and very innovative productions that you've done over the years. And, and now, um, I, you know, I saw in that one clip that you're trying to. Okay, and then now we're gonna have you know uh, this this show coming up in, in January, and we keep waiting and we keep waiting. <laughs> yes. uh, but you know, I recall watching that. I'm looking forward to what's coming up in February. So we want you to share with everybody uh, just what it is. What is Imaginary Homelands? Well, you know, uh, I uh, I've always had. Uh, because of this background in both modern dance and Okinawan uh, dance, I've, um, it's like two sides of my brain and trying to put it together. And 
trying to figure out how how to create as well as be respectful to the tradition. And um, I think studying Okinawan dance really helped me to, to realize, to understand where the dancers and who the dancers, who created these pieces, these traditional pieces that are hundreds of years old. And the environment the, that the people were creating in, um, the stories that they wanted to tell through movement, this is all, this all was inspiration for me to say, okay, we should be responding to our environment in the same way. We should be using whatever experiences we have to tell our stories now, just as our ancestors did then, 300 years ago they were responding to their environment. So we are telling stories now. And one example is um, uh, the, the uh, last piece in the show, which is called The Spaces in Between, started two years ago with uh, Kenny saying, you know, the concept of ma and how important that is in between and how uh, Norman, Norman is always telling me as, as his student that, the spaces in between the notes are just as important as the notes themselves, right? So we started talking about the spaces between our cultures, between Japanese taiko and Okinawan music, between uh, koto and obo and modern dance and Okinawan dance, and where does this all come together? So how can we meet? Where can we meet together? And um, then the pandemic happened, and we were not not rehearsing or we're meeting on and off. And all of a sudden the piece became the story of the spaces in between ourselves. And all of a sudden we have this distance, we're alone and we're together and then there's a six feet, right? So that's, it, it became the spaces in between took on another another meaning. So that's that, that was kind of a way that, um, that art works in responding to your environment, in responding to the time. So hopefully people looking at that piece will say, oh, that, that, was, that was a story about the time when we had to be separate from each other, when we couldn't touch each other, when we had to wear these masks. Hmm. Yeah. So actually that piece has masks. Oh. Uh, for, for face masks as well. Hmm. So for safety and also for, for to, to further the story of that. So, you know, um, Salman Rushdie is one of my favorite writers. And uh, he was talking about how when we remember something, it's, it's not ever how it's been. It's not ever exactly how it was. Uh, it's how, when we tell a story, it's, we remember the last time we told the story, which would have been different than the time before that when we told the story right? Which is different than the time it happened, because when you, when you talk to people who were there, you remember different things. And so that, I think that's why old people have such great stories, because, you know, we keep retelling these stories and making them better, right? So, <laughs> so, but, so that, that to me was, as I was trying to hold on to the tradition of trying to keep it very, very uh, pure and sacred and saying, you know, Modern dance has given me the tools to create, but Okinawan dance gave me the reason to create. It gave mm -hmm. me the stories and it gave me actually the license to create because of how these old, old dances were created, when they were created, why? Why? Responding to the politics and the clothing and the, and the food and the, and the, um, textiles that they had, all of that. So the music. So then uh, I felt like I had to find someone who has one foot in tradition and one foot in the creative world. And that was Kenny Endo to me. I've known Kenny since the 70s in San Francisco. So to me, he was the master of this. And so I asked him, how do you do this? You want to you want to work on something, and he said, "Yeah." And you know what? I've always wanted to work with Norman Kanishiro. So, so we got together and we started to explore. And then 
uh, Derek Fujio came in uh, about eight months after that and has been such a such a, a, a blessing to the, the weaving everything together. So uh, we have we have a, a one hour show because the the producer does not want an intermission so that if the if we have an audience they won't mingle. <laughs> mm. so, so we have just a one hour show. Everybody comes vaccinated, masks, and go home. <laughs> so. But so we you have are, to accommodate because of the COVID restrictions. That's interesting yes. too. <laughs> yes, yes. So it's a sign of our times, right? And it's it's definitely a reflection of this space and this time that we are in now. So I think we uh, we are being true to what our ancestors had had wanted. <laughs> so, that, no, that's really interesting. Uh, you know. Well, I, I like hearing the deep meaning of spaces in between, especially because, you know, in my lifetime, the only space in between I was referred to was between my ears and it was empty space. <laughs> yeah, the, um, the title, Imaginary Homelands, could you, you kind of give me an idea how you came up with that and, and what oh, it means? It is, it is actually, so, so Salman Rushdie, is my favorite writer, one of my favorite writers. And he actually, the title is taken from his book of essays. And his essays were talking about how uh, British, uh, how writers uh, from India in, in uh, Britain had, are writing about their homeland through different eyes, through different remembrances through fragments of their remembrance and how we hang on to these fragments so dearly because that's all we have, right? When we leave our homelands, we're desperate to hang on to mm -hmm. anything when actually it may be just fragments of what it was. And so it's more about us forgetting than it is about us remembering. Mm -hmm. So that's where oh, the title, title came from. I mean, I guess it'd be like Tarohiga going back to Okinawa after the war and, and seeing the devastation, right? I mean, it's a whole different idea of what you remember and, and the impetus to help Okinawa at that time. Oh, no, very, I, wow, very powerful. So is it, I don't know how productions come together or how you, you're, so Saman Rashis is one of your favorite um, writers, but uh, did you always have that? title in mind or did it come after um how how does it that was happen? always there as i oh. was struggling with my imaginary uh -huh. homeland you know i was always struggling with my modern background um and also studying okinawan dance and trying to fit the two together not in the beginning but then eventually it happens and so how to re be respectful to both and how to i guess to to resolve it in my mind, it became, oh, okay. I think I think it's okay to do this. Yes. Plus that I'm old, so might as well do it now, right? Oh my God. You know, old is a relative term. <laughs> <laughs> and in the Uchinanchu community, it's a very relative. It's it's uh, a good thing, huh? Yeah. It's a good so, thing. So my mother, my mother just turned a hundred years old and and people who have come to visit her. And I think it's an Okinawan thing. They always touch her. They touch her. And she was, you know, oh, I think we're not supposed to touch now. But oh. they wanted to touch her and hold her because um, there's that feeling like if you, if somebody is of that age and is still healthy, that somehow you can bring that her spirit into you so that that will happen as well. So my relatives were all touching her. <laughs> it's like, whoa, good. <laughs> all masks, but all but touching. So wow. it, it's an interesting overlap to me. Yeah. When everybody starts touching me, I won't be as uh, happy <laughs> no. about it. It means I'm just Then you know old. you're old, John. Then you know you're old. <laughs> you're not old yet. <laughs> well, you mentioned that, you know, one of the members in this production was very important to you because of his reach um you know across so many different uh really venues uh and not only venues but uh, types of music and i'm talking about kenny endo uh, all of us are so familiar with that name over the years uh over the many years uh you mentioned that uh, 
very recently. He's a recipient of the USA Fellows, uh, which I believe is a, a fifty thousand uh, dollar award, and that goes to very select individuals in the uh, art community. And uh, so, congratulations to him for that. And then he was, um, you know, the first non-Japanese national to be honored with a, a Natori or professional stage name. And of course, uh, everyone knows him as the artistic director of the Taiko Center of the Pacific. And, you know, his many travels throughout the world, uh, you know, as a, as a teacher, as, as well as a performer. Uh, as a performer, he's been featured on PBS. Uh, he had a special called Spirit, in, in Spirit of Taiko in 2005. And he's performed with Michael Jackson, Prince. Uh, he opened for the who uh you know I, i'm sure there's people out there listening and, yeah who is the who uh <laughs> he, he performed a, a duet with singer um bobby mcferrin and he's been on the soundtrack of picture bride apocalypse now and even uh contributed to avatar um he has a day named after him uh kenny endo day here in honolulu and uh, of course has been recognized by the national endowment of the arts but uh before we bring him on let's learn a little bit more about kenny endo in 90 i went to japan uh, for the first time and um i'm sorry 1980 um and was originally going to stay uh, about a year to study the traditional music and as soon as I got over there I realized um, one year was not going to be enough so I ended up staying 10 years and even 10 years wasn't enough um, I really had the opportunity to um, study with some really incredible teachers there um, one of them was Saburo Mochizuki and another one was um, Bokusei Mochizuki of the uh, this is Hogaku Hayashi, the classical music that you would find in Kabuki and No. And there's so much uh, wisdom in the, the theory and the practice of, of these um, traditions. Um, so this instrument um, is called the Kotsuzumi. This is uh, one of the four basic instruments from No Theater. Um, it's the only drum in Japan we don't hit with a, a drum stick we call a bachi, but we hit with our bare hand. With your left hand, you can squeeze and release the rope, and that changes the sound. Um, so I'm going to just um, play some patterns influenced by the tradition. You're going to hear me doing kakegoi, which is vocalization. Originally, when no music started, these were signals to each other when to begin, speed up or slow down. Gradually became part of the music. So when I uh, learn this tradition, um, we had to learn how to put the instruments together, how to play them, about the music, and to develop that voice as well. So i um, just going to do a improvisation on Kotsuzumi. Yo. 
That was really nice. Um, yeah, I'm always, I'm always surrounded by Okinawa and cultural Okinawa music. I hardly, hardly have the chance to to hear traditional Japanese music. So mm. that was refreshing for me, at least. Let's bring on Kenny Endo. Hello. Hello. Hi, nice hi, Kenny Endo. <laughs> you know, usually I. I think over the years, I, I, I see you at some of the same venues because I'm usually running amok with all my little lines and, uh, you know, you're either coming off or going on stage. But we're, whenever you start playing and, and you yourself or you with the group, all the kids in my group, they just have, they're mesmerized and they go running back in. They want to watch you. Uh, just so powerful uh, any time that uh, we've seen your performance over the years. And, uh, you know, hearing that Kotsuzumi, I mean, I, I remember watching this, you know, a year ago, but I never knew, realized that it was that type of a percussion instrument. I always thought they were hitting different types of wood, you know, or something back there. So that was so interesting to see. And that was very, very impressive. Yeah, that's one of my favorite instruments from Japan um, because it has such a long history and, and the way it's made, the craftsman. And I also like it because it's lightweight. <laughs> Most of the typo are really heavy. <laughs> okay, may I ask, Yuki, Yuki Sensei said, um, what was she was thinking about um, her project? She easily thought about you. Um, so what, what was it? She, did she like send you an email, give you a call, say, Kenny, I'm thinking about doing this. Would you be interested? Actually, we went out drinking. Oh, okay. No. That's a better way, I guess. With Norman, yeah. <laughs> yeah hey, that's know. how we get all our officers. Like he said, we, we met in the seventies in San Francisco Oh, uh, yeah, that makes us old. But um, <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I think right, right around when I started Taiko in 1975, there was this whole um, Asian, Asian American art scene that was going on in Sam, in the Bay Area, and the West Coast pretty much. But uh, you know, Yuki was part of that. I was part of that, and um, so yeah, um, uh, it's it's just amazing to see her uh, going to Okinawa and, and discovering her roots. And, and, and I had kind of a parallel uh, experience by going to Japan and then um, ending up back back here in Hawaii and, and uh, being able to work together has been really great. Um, but I guess the, the as Yuki mentioned, um, the, it was called Taiko Drum and Dance. Um, the UH Dance Department sponsored a, a concert. And, and we did it once in 2013. When we did it the second time, I think it was 2017, uh, we were able to play a piece together. And um, I, really, I really love Yuki's choreography because she has that traditional element, but also a very cutting edge uh, modern uh, edge to it so, so it's really interesting to see it come together because in, in some ways my music is kind of like that yes and yuki sensei said um you brought this concept of ma to to the i don't know to the room and then um i guess that was something you you and norman and yuki could see could I don't know agree on uh, the space uh, between the notes or the music, uh, but she also mentioned Okinawan music and Japanese music are different. 
Um, so how was it collaborating and putting these these um, production together? Was it bumping heads or? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, um, you know, the concept of Ma, I think you find it in all types of music. Uh, it's not something particular to Japanese music. Um, you find Ma in Okinawa music, in, in music from all over Asia, and, and e even in, in uh, Western classical music, when they play a rubato section, you know, it's that, that Ma, that timing. Uh, so as, as Norman said, it's it's... Um, not only is it the notes you play, but it's the the space in between that's also part of the music, and you have to put energy into that. But um, it's been a great collaboration. I, I you know we uh, I think I've learned a lot from from Norman as well as Derek, um, and uh, you know I I've done a lot of collaborations throughout the years and. Um, someone told me, well, the, the definition of a successful collaboration is, are you still friends after the collaboration? <laughs> <laughs> and, and I was talking to Yuki the other day. I said, well, I, I, it's kind of sad that we're going to perform, and I hope we can keep doing this because I have really enjoy just hanging out with uh, Yuki and her dancers and, uh, of course, Norman and Derek as well. It's just been a... Uh, there's a there's a process that musicians go through. It's called woodshedding, where you're just kind of jamming and just trying to come up with stuff. So, uh, it's it's been uh, it's been a long you know we've been been able to work together for a long time. So it uh, for me it's really been enjoyable. Is it ever fin finalized the pr the piece or does it evolve all the time? Is Saturday uh -huh. gonna be different to Sunday? What do you guys do? Yes, um, my playing is is pretty much ninety percent improvisation. So even though this the dance is set and, or some of the music is set, I play it a little bit different each time, which could be a good thing, could be a a, a bad thing too sometimes. But um, I, I I yeah I, I originally I played jazz, so there's a lot of improvisation in that music. So I approach um, playing taiko like that as well. Oh, what do you mean you originally play jazz? Uh, I used to be a, a, a jazz drummer. I used to play drum set. Oh. Um, and um, and that's, I actually did that before I started taiko when I was a little kid. Um, and then there came to a point uh, when I was in my early 20s, I thought, well, if I'm going to do jazz, I should move to New York and just get jump into the scene over there because that's like the center or if i'm going to do taiko i should go to japan and really learn about the tradition and study with some some you know really good teachers over there so i ended up choosing taiko and um and and kind of stopped playing tight uh, drum set after that but um it's kind of come out in my music because i've mm -hmm. set my mm -hmm. drums up like kind of like a drum set so it's not a real traditional way of playing taiko yeah, when they start swinging, it really swings. <laughs> it really swings. <laughs> yes. You know, an interesting thing for me and what I learned in all of this very early on was, you know, I, I, uh, I didn't realize that the, the role of taiko in Okinawan music was so different than the role of taiko in Japanese music. And so when... Uh, you know, Norman said to me, yeah, the, 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 the instrument that keeps the percussion, keeps the rhythm going, is not the taiko in Okinawan music, it's the sanshin, mm. right? So it's like I had just put two drummers together, right? It's like, <laughs> oh, I thought sanshin and then, and then uh, taiko, Japanese taiko, but then when Derek came on board, everything just melted. Everything just kind of came together. So the melodic part. Yeah. So I learned a lot as well. <laughs> <laughs> so let, let me ask one last question for uh, Kenny. Um, this collaboration, uh, what, what's your strongest takeaway? You've collaborated with so many different artists. 
but uh, to collaborate with a Kutu and a Sanshin and you know I mean uh, what what did that uh, what kind of perspective did that give you? Well, when you collaborate with string instruments, you have to be be really careful when you're playing an instrument like taiko because it could be overpowering. Mm -hmm. In fact, um, that's one of the things I I that we're gonna have to work out when we actually perform live. I think the the those string instruments really have to be brought up in the PA system. Um, that way I don't have to play super soft. I mean, I'm going to try playing soft anyway during those sections, but if, if um, you know, we got to achieve some kind of balance in the, in the mix uh, for when we perform. So, <clears throat> but yeah, it's, it's been, it's been great. Um, every time I used to go to these uh, events and see Norman's group play, I, I, I just, uh, I loved his music and, and and have a, so much respect for uh, the the tradition that he comes from. All right. Speaking of Norman, it's uh, it's time we talk about Mr. Norman Kaneshiro. <laughs> uh, you know, icon by in his own right here. Uh, it's so many people uh, have heard his performances. Uh, he's also such an educator, a historian. A researcher, uh, he's the founder and musical director of Quan Chi in Kabudan, and uh, also uh, on staff at the University of Hawaii Manoa. But you know, over the years, um, it's just his reach has been to all facets of Hawaii's uh, Uchinanchu community and and beyond. Um, so, uh, but every time he speaks, it's so uh, yeah, you just have to stop and and listen because it's so profound uh you know i you could put a hundred of my years together and i won't come close to one <laughs> sentence of of his profoundness uh so let's uh let's hear a little bit before we bring him on okay on um music uh, everything is centered around um the tradition that i do which is uta sanching um, and all other instruments, and this is true now. I'm not. I'm not trying to just put myself on a pedestal here. I just happen to play with the but all the other instruments are peripheral instruments, and so we we have a we our our music is centered around the And the the important thing is the the central part of it is uta, which is song, and so the 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 basis of our music is song, and everything else, including the sanching, is an accompaniment to that. And so the, the musical core is of is song and sanshing, and all the other instruments are there to um, to uh, support that and to um, embellish that, and sort of uh, teiku or taiko traditions ends up being sort of a, a, the outer periphery of that of that musical core. So it's sort of these concentric circles of of accompaniment that we have. Um, but. Uh, this, the music and the dance has been a very, very important um, part of this idea of homeland for us, especially here in Hawaii. Um, I think for the three of us, really, the, the music and the performing arts was actually a way for us um, to, um, to connect to our, our heritage. And, you know, because um, those was us being actually three, four generations removed from, from the homeland. Um, we grew up with stories of our connections to the homeland. We have, we grew up with this strong idea of who our our grandparents, our great grandparents were, where they came from. And but for most of us, it, it's an imaginary homeland. We've never seen it. We never touched it. And so the music and the dance was a way to kind of get um, to bridge that gap in a way to make those stories about our 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 ancestors a little bit more familiar. Until, and of course the 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 journeys that we've taken in, in our respective arts have actually brought us to make that physical contact with our homeland to be able to, um, to make that connection. And so uh, it's, been a, it's been a great um, journey that way. And so the, um, the piece we'd like to share, and again, because it just happens that three of us represent Okinawan traditions, <laughs> uh, we're going to kill all um, three birds with one stone uh, in this performance. Um, it's uh, a, a dance piece uh, entitled uh, 
Nagarata, and this is a song about uh, moon, moon viewing. And the interesting thing about this piece is that a lot of times in Okinawan context, and actually I think in, in, in Japanese and Chinese literature as well, the moon represents sort of, it's this, this singular light in the sky, sort of represents uh, solitude uh, and loneliness. Um, but what's interesting about this song is it's a song about the uh, tsukimi or about the moon viewing, and there's a moon viewing tradition in Okinawa as well. Um, but it talks about um, going out to enjoy the, the view of the moon, but that the feeling that you get from of watching the moon reminds you of the one that you love. And at the end, um, the, dan the, the, the persona in the poem says that I have to return to my, my, love, my beloved at home. He's waiting for me. And it's because of that, um, the, the viewing the moon. So it's a little different take on that the idea of the moon, but it, uh, it kind of goes in the opposite direction. Rather than solitude, it, it reminds um, the person of this place of, that they belong to, this place that they can call home, this place to go back to, and this place that they're excited to, um, to return to. So we'd like to share with you um, this dance, uh, Nakarata, and it's actually uh, comprised of three musical pieces. So, um, yeah, Nakarata Bushi, Karaya Bushi, and uh, Shongane Bushi. And so um, we'll do a Uta Sanshing accompanied by Kutu um, and accompanying the dance. And so Nakarata Bushi. me. 
Wow. <laughs> let's uh, let's bring uh, Norman Hanashiro on the screen. Hi, Sai. Hi, Sai, Norman Shinshi. Hello. Hello. You know, uh, what, what I found interesting about that clip was I was listening to it. I was like, I only hear Derek. <laughs> I, couldn't, <laughs> I, I couldn't hear too much of the Sachin coming through. But, you know, the, just again, uh, Seeing all that together, and of course, I know uh, you know Yuki was saying, "No, oh, that we that's not the contemporary stuff, and that's not what you're gonna see in you know at our show." But uh, uh, you know, I I love that piece, and um, the fact that you're putting three pieces together in that song was uh, was great. Uh, but so, what are your thoughts about imaginary homelands? Um, I mean, well. It's, you know, like, like I explained in the, you know, one of the really nice things about this collaboration is that we spent a lot of time, and I think this is, yeah, that this is the way that really collaborations and producing art should be, is that we really got a lot of time to know each other as artists, as practitioners. And, you know, it's, that's the thing is that all the three of us, um, and Derek as well, the four of us, we are, you know, we, we, we kind of straddle the space of being performers and artists, but also as practitioners, you know, so that we have these traditions that we we teach and that we we uh, nurture as well. And so we really got to know each other very well in that space as well, hearing stories about how we were trained, um, our perspectives about traditions. And I got to really, um, you know, a lot of times we, we think so much about like how how different Okinawan and Japanese things are. We try to separate ourselves so much in, in many ways, but yeah, it's, um, you know, really getting to see the, how the traditions work and how the, the music is laid out. It's, you know, we, we found so many similarities and so many, so many overlaps, you know, even, even like, even the way that um, the function of Taiko, you know, it's, it's relative within, within the traditions. And so it's such a, um, you know, such amazing opportunity to explore that you know based around that theme around this imaginary homelands um how you know how we've explored that you know our connections to our identity and into the arts that we do but more yeah just really um getting a good feel of who we are who we are as people and the what what we bring to the um the the things that we yeah our performances and all that and so all that i think is um and you know we had the we had the great you know it was this you know the show this it's been a was it the three year process now <laughs> yeah, it yeah and you know we had um yeah like what three or four false starts as far as you know when we were actually going to do the show and you know actually yeah it's I, I can't believe that that performance that we we're pulling from was uh almost a year to date and you know that was that was supposed to be like the 
the precursor to our, our actual you know show and so um just so with just a disclaimer there was no good there aren't going to be any <laughs> okinawan <laughs> dance pieces or any um uh koteng or anything like that in there <laughs> um but yeah it's i think that was the thing is that we had to you know talking about imaginary homelands is that we also had to kind of reimagine what you know, not just the cultural homelands or our, our her hereditary homelands but also the the home space of who we are as performers and as practitioners and how do we reimagine bringing that to the table and i this was to me it was this experience has been is this weird push and pull between um being super humbled but also super empowered in the sense that you know working i think that's one of the things that when you work with with great artists um the art becomes more important than the ego and i've had to really keep my ego in check a lot but yeah that was one of the, the biggest things learning from you know um and it's, it's you know um you know most people don't know you you know people know yuki since yuki sensei as the okinawan dancer but people don't know that she's she is a an immense a huge name in, in modern dance in hawaii and you know modern dance wouldn't look the same without in hawaii without mm. yuki and she's she's it is a uh international <laughs> figure in <laughs> in modern dance and so um yeah you know and and of course you know with with kenny and these these long you know not just connections to tradition but these long um careers and this this deep involvement in in the the new works and uh, these other these other parts that they do you know it's it's it was really um uh yeah, and it was it was very very humbling to to be in that space, and but it was empowering to just sit there and be, get to learn from the greats, basically to work closely. It's the you know it's the really the best way to learn is to, to be a student is to just tag along and 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 follow along and musically follow along, um, um, and yeah, in, in in everything, not just music, but you know. How, how you approach rehearsals, how do you approach the, the collaborative process, how do you sit in a room and, and speak to each other? All those things were just, you know, really, really educational. And you know, um, and you know it, and as much as yeah, you know, like Derek is my is my my Sanching student and all that, but I this was a huge education to to work with him as well. Uh, closely like this, you know, um we worked on other projects before but not not this intensely. And uh not this creatively and collaboratively and so it was that was a uh, very um that was very uh what's the word i'm looking for um it's a very simple word i can't find it was intimidating <laughs> very intimidating to work with these derek himself too is this you know this amazing musician just uh, multi-talented and just vast knowledge of just you know pure music and i had to i had a lot of catching up to do in that respect you know um but yeah, it was it was sort of reimagining what it is that you know, what it is that you think that you know, uh, what it is that you're familiar with, and how do we how do we get that you know into the? And so it's like we're sort of creating you know yeah, from our our places of comfort, from our our little home bases as as performers and as as um, practitioners, how do we kind of create this this new space, this new um, home? And these new relationships, you know, um, you know, I've known each uh, each each of these people individually, and you know, of course, uh, you can sense and I we work uh, a lot together. Derek, we've worked together a lot, but this is this has been a whole other type of relationship and a whole other type of collaboration for him. This is yeah, this is priceless. And as much as you know, <laughs> we kept on saying once we kept on getting delayed. It was a, it was a real blessing to be able to have that space and that time to really nurture and develop those relationships and and for me it was just this amazing yeah it was was going to school i mean every every rehearsal every meeting everything was just this immense education for me and i think yeah if we had just had that nine months or whatever just to you know rehearse and get it out i don't think yeah it would have been that same experience i'm i'm really really grateful and fortunate for that so does the collaboration happen when you're all together or does it happen at home when you're by yourself and then you bring something 
to the, I don't know, the meeting or the rehearsal and then. Yeah, I mean, it's been, it's, well, sort of both, right? I think we, yeah, because I mean, it's, I mean, <laughs> the, should I spill the beans on the collaboration? <laughs> because, <laughs> as Kenny said, you know, what he's doing is mostly improvisational, but the pieces that we've kind of created are largely improvisational in themselves. So we, we kind of, we've sort of mapped out. Um, and that was the, the other great thing is that we sort of mapped out this language that we speak as, as, a, as a unit, um, how we operate. And so we've kind of created sort of this, this uh, how, we know how, it's interesting that, yeah, we saw like sort of the first, the first year that we we worked together, and then from the second year, there was this uh, major difference in you know how how we we understood each other and how we were able to communicate. You know, we we didn't you know initially when we started the project, we did a lot of talking about our backgrounds, but as far as the music, we didn't do a whole lot of talking about the music itself. It was just kind of we'll map certain things out. Um, but the other than that, was depending on that sort of that. Um, that musical language that we we kind of developed the among the three of us, uh, Kenny, Derek, and myself, um, and so yeah, it's sort of you know we will shoot ideas around, of course, you know, and you know Kenny has this amazing repertoire of um, of originals, and it's like okay, we just we're just waiting for him. It's like okay, bust out the bust out the next originals, so we just follow along, but you know, um, yeah, you know most of the um, most of the pieces were just a combination of that. You know, we we get together and do something, and then each of us will sort of ruminate on it, think about what it is that we're we're doing, and then bring something different. Um, and then, yeah, these pieces, uh, each of the pieces um, have actually um, uh, evolved greatly, and especially with uh, that the piece that Yuki was talking about, spaces. You know, that was actually one of the first things. It, that was one of the first things that we we jammed on, and that that sort of it, it evolved into um, a dance piece and, and this and the you know um, the the musical piece that it is, and that went through a lot of different. I don't know, and we still have time. It might it might evolve a little bit more before <laughs> the twenty six comes around. Oh, that's that... great. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, Carol. Oh, sorry, I was going to ask. If this is for. Does that make you uncomfortable in any level? Like, cause you oh, bring extremely. your. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and that's that was the that's that was really the education, you know, is that um, what I really uh, enjoyed about this project the most is that I had to bring everything that I knew, which isn't much actually, um, but yeah, I had to really scrape <laughs> scrape the pan for every little bit of thing, and again because you know it's these guys i'm working with these giants in their their fields of what they do and these people that have these vast deep knowledges in you know in the arts that they do and here i'm just i'm the part-time musician <laughs> that's coming in um and but i had to really yeah scrape and grasp at every everything that i knew about okinawan music okinawan culture um to to bring to the table and that that was always I think the most educational is from from that perspective. So it wasn't just the new knowledge, but it was really re-examining like what is what makes this thing that I do Okinawa and or versus what you know what makes it me trying to sound like a I'm playing a guitar on Sanching versus what makes a Sanching actually sound Okinawa and what how does that come into something that's you know a a, a rhythm that's not necessarily Okinawa but what what is it that you bring to that and vice versa and, and it's been amazing the um yeah just sort of the the ideas that come out and just the different ways of looking at um yeah just just the music and and looking at and look kind of peeping into yuki's mind <laughs> of <laughs> how to how yeah choreography and using the use of space and the, and and the use of arranging bodies and things like that and how you know how all those come together so it's been it's been just this amazing process you know what is so interesting to me too is 
as as when you go when you create something, Caro is good question. When you create something, you you prepare like crazy, right? You have all these ideas and you prepare and and you go into rehearsal. But once you get in rehearsal, you have to let it all go. You have to watch. You have to observe, and you have to just let things happen. And some mistakes that happened just were wonderful because you were you let go. You didn't walk in there with your plan going, we're going to do this and we're going to do this, right? I mean, you have a plan in case nothing happens. But this is what I do when I go into choreography, into a, a new piece. But to watch the musicians, they did the same thing. They were thinking, we were preparing the piece they started to play. And all of a sudden, these surprises would come out and Norman would start singing this song. I go, where did that come from? And it comes from a, a place of openness. It comes from a place of being, uh, of letting go and of channeling what the art is and what it needs right at that moment. And it's hard to explain, but you have to assert and be humble at the same time and you have to, you have to, yeah, it's, 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 it's hard. It's very and, difficult, but it's yeah, so fun. <laughs> yes. It's so fun. And so in, you know, I work with recorded music a lot because I haven't found musicians to work with here in Hawaii, where I used to work in San Francisco with a lot of musicians, but here in Hawaii have not uh, so much. And to see these musicians come in and just, pull off these surprises and fill in and, and, and after it's over, it's like, I don't know, what should we do? I don't know. And we get in there and it's just beautiful. You know, it's amazing to me to watch the process and it's nobody's is a strong ego. All three of them were so humble walking into this space mm, with the same kind of uh, graciousness as everybody else. So um, that was a real, real gift. There was nobody who was high maintenance in any my dancers, <laughs> my, no one, no one. It was a it was a real joy and a blessing to 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 go to these rehearsals. And so we'll see if we can still talk to each other at the end of this, Kenny. <laughs> yeah. No, I think yeah. it's I think it's wonderful. Yeah, I like what uh, Norman said about both humbling and empowering. I think those that that concept is uh, so, um, I guess. Just powerful in and of itself you know i've watched specials on queen and recently the beatles and how they just gotta get, get thrown together and they got you know uh, 10 to 20 days to come up with 10 15 <laughs> songs and it's amazing to watch how that happens you know and so i can imagine that's pretty much what happened here right i mean normally i can i'm only assuming but a lot of times norman and even um Derek, they're playing pieces, right? That because dances are already established, the songs are established, and they're playing pieces. And but to come to this project and and just create, that's that's really the definition of a musician and completes them. You know, just like singers, I think you got cover singers, but there's the singers that can write and can arrange music. Oftentimes, are the most successful ones and the most talented ones. So, mm -hmm. speaking of which, um, you know, I want to introduce. Uh, the, the one person we haven't introduced yet, which is Derek Fujio. He's the a music uh, department chair and the uh, orchestra leader teacher at Pamaki Middle School. And um, he's also the president of the Koto uh, Association or organization known as Ryukyu Sotoku uh, Koyokai Hawaii. And um, this guy plays so many instruments. You know, I think it was... Uh, Yuki that said earlier, you know, oh, like Kenny has his hands and feet and everything. Well, boy, uh, Derek has his hands, feet, lips, fingers on, on about, you know, 20 different instruments. Yes. It's amazing. Yes. We, we featured Norman. We featured uh, Derek on, on YouTube. And if you guys go back and watch those, you'll see that this guy's just amazing. But let's 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 hear a little bit from him before we bring him on. Uh, in Okinawan music, the kutu, the koto is kind of a, an auxiliary uh, secondary role. So my job is always to be kind of accompanimental and it's kind of been my place to to be that side man to kind of come in. 
Um, and as you may have heard, I've come from different backgrounds. I'm an orchestra band director by trade, but um, I studied Okinawan music from a very young age. Uh, and being invited by Yuki to be a part of this collaboration has been kind of really cool for me because, of course, Norman was my Sanqing teacher. Uh, how old am I? Uh, oh, a very long time ago, many decades <laughs> ago, uh, from the time I was five. But also, you know, growing up uh, as a Yonsei, as a Okinawan Japanese American person in Hawaii, uh, from the 90s when I was a kid, Kenny Endo's name was synonymous with. Um, you know, bringing taiko to to the national audience. When you think of modern uh, contemporary taiko, you think of Kenny Endo. So it's been really uh, an honor to be a part of this collaboration. But also, like we were saying, when we first came together, even though we come from the same, you know, modern country, um, it was hard to find commonalities. And n no matter what you say about music being a universal language, it is, but it isn't. And you, you cannot, no matter how good intentioned, uh, speak and understand a language you don't know. You can try to try to be understood and you can try to understand others, but um, from there on, it's just about finding commonalities. So uh, us ha doing a lot of improvised music, it's forced us to kind of learn each other's vocabularies and kind of step up to that. And over the course of the collaboration, we've kind of started to understand that a little bit better. So um, as you listen to us, uh, unravel with us as we try to explore each other's languages and, and see what fits and even what doesn't. Um, we all have our masters and our teachers and our, our learners and not everything you hear on stage uh, necessarily is what we've learned, but everything we do reflects the experiences we've had um, in America, in Japan, in Okinawa, wherever we've been. Um, it kind of adds up to, to build into our, um, our soul, our psyche, our language. Uh, our, our first language, what comes out naturally when we, we try to speak musically. Derek Fujio. Hey, Derek. Hi. Hello, thank you for having me. You've been waiting in the, in the back <laughs> studio for much of the show. Uh, thank you for being so patient. Thank you for also being so well dressed tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and uh you know uh, what you know of all the profound things you said in that clip the one takeaway that really hit me was when you were a child in the 90s i was a working adult <laughs> in the 90s oh my goodness but anyway uh you know it goes to say how amazing your talents are because from being a child in the 90s to where you are today and what you've accomplished and then now to uh, I've known you, you to participate in many different collaborations, yeah, even currently. And so, uh, just, you know, want to hear what, what your thoughts are uh, on what makes this collaboration so unique to you. Well, um, I wanted to also kind of share my origin story with this collaboration since everyone was talking about how it came to be. Uh, we talked about how Norman was my teacher since I was five years old. Um, and I knew Kenny and knew of him and idolized him. But actually, um, in elementary school, I, I happened to play on a soccer team with his sons. So I actually knew Kenny and Chizuko as uh, soccer mom and soccer dads <laughs> over at Kapolono. And then in eighth grade, I first came across Yuki as my arts history teacher, or ninth grade yes. at Midpack. Yes. 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 So I really came to this collaboration as, as the kid, or working with all of these amazing people, having met them as, as a kid and, and, you know, larger than life. Um, and so also talking about the speech that I made, you know, a year ago, it, it's interesting because I forget my words, but they still kind of resonate. Um, when we first started out, uh, if you guys remember from the first trailer at the beginning of this Yuntaku, there was a little um, collage of all of these old pictures of old timey, you know, Japanese American people. Yuki asked us to bring out uh, pictures of our grandparents, our great grandparents. So uh, I have pictures of my my grandpa hitting taiko at the Kapuhulu Bon Dance, my grandma doing odori at someone's, you know, Shinenenkai at wherever. Um, those big family photos with all the generations and, you know, the matriarch, patriarch sitting stern faced in their business suit, what have you. And those were, you know, our 
our memories, our ancestral memories, uh, me, Norman, Kenny, Yuki, of where we came from. And I think like our tradition, the show is not traditional. We're not, you know, putting our traditional artists to use those pictures and those memories. We don't go around our daily lives thinking, you know, this is my grandpa, this is my grandma, this is what shaped me. But when you pull out that picture, it's like, oh, and it hits something really nostalgic and, you know, Natsukashi and, and central to your core that you realize that it's so powerful and close to, to your heart that it's always kind of there. And I think our Koto and Sanshin and Taiko, it was like that, is we get dropped into this these spaces and we interact with each other. And it wasn't first and foremost on our minds, but that's where it is and that's, that's how it's there for us. Um, for this collaboration, you know, we're, we're mixing Western and Japanese and Okinawan music. And I've, I've done things like that before. Um, my senior year of high school, Norman mm. called me up to do a, a gig at the Academy of Arts, just some dinner music for some like wine and dine thing. And we pulled in Darren Miyashiro, uh, who's a Sawai Koto sensei. And we call ourselves D&D. &D. And it was this kind of Okinawan Japanese fusion sort of thing and it was it was all all well and good and, and a lot of it kind of has the same vibe of the stuff we were doing now and it was you know pleasant dinner music that no one's listening to and then we played at my grad party and and kind of tossed it off but i think the thing that really uh makes this collaboration imaginary homelands different is uh, and i don't think i can praise them enough are, are the dancers um, and they're not here tonight you don't get to see that so that's uh, further incentive to come and watch the show. Um, but like what Norman was saying, we were used to being in charge. We're, you know, we're sensei. I'm a middle school teacher. We're supposed to be in charge of the room. We're, we're supposed to say what is what. But to come to a collaboration like this where um, Yuki and Kenny and Norman are, are all really highly qualified. They have great creative ideas. And then we have this dance, uh, this amazing dance that Yuki has crafted. Um, she's pulled dancers from her past history and they have backgrounds in contemporary, modern ballet, jazz, hip hop, Okinawan and hula. And all of that comes through in the performance. And there are moments in the pieces where uh, the dancers have improvis improvisatory roles as well. So they're they're making stuff up as, as it goes along. And our job is to react to it. And so, like they said, everything is different each time, a little bit different. <laughs> and the longer we've done this, the more comfortable and the more solid it gets, the more we trust each other, the more we trust each other to be free, and the more we're able to react artistically and appropriately when that happens. Um, at In December, Omicron started hitting, the numbers shot up, uh, Christmas happened, New Year's happened, so we took a break for about a month and change, maybe four or five weeks we didn't meet each other. Um, Yuki was meeting with the dancers very safely in small groups, but we didn't see the dance until we came back in the second week of January. And I'm sitting there playing this dance that we've, you know, we've accompanied many times for like half a year. And I'm like, oh, I'm playing my music and this is different. This is very different than it was a <laughs> month ago. It's, it's more nuanced. Every single dancer was embodying a character more deeply. There was a shy, scared person. There was an old, weird man. There was a cheeky monkey. And it was so... It started to impact me on a much deeper level than it had a month ago. And I had to do something. Like, I have to, I have to play as good as what I'm seeing. Um, and... For me, I think that's the coolest thing about this collaboration is there are so many artists, there are so many chefs doing their best to tell a story and we're all doing our best to be a part of that story with, with whatever histories and skills and, and music and dance we have to share. Wow. wow, I'm speechless. And thank you, Derek, for bringing up the, the dancers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that kind of, so for for me, I'm not a musician, so it was, it's hard picturing what's going to happen. And now <laughs> with you, with the, um, hearing you, it's kind of a little bit more solid in my head, but we'll see. <laughs>
But you know that Maybe. that's a testament to uh, Yuki that really she's the only one that could have brought all this together and, and <laughs> it off. You know, the, the, and the way that she creates space. Well, of course she created the space for us to work, but also the way in any monkey waterfall, the the spaces that she creates is just amazing. Mm -hmm. I think John, you were mentioning that earlier about seeing that creativity, but really creating yeah space where people act and interact is it's something that only yeah. It's something very unique to Monkey Waterfall. It's that's that's Yuki's uh, mm -hmm. paw prints all over it. <laughs> or well, it, maybe. you know, it can't happen unless everybody trusts each other in in the studio, in the space, and that doesn't always happen so easily. You really have to nurture and shape and massage the whole. You know, you have to taste the air every single moment. <laughs> that you're in the room because things change and people have needs and people and i think that you know that as a group it you're not going to make good art unless that happens i mean it can happen with people who hate each other i guess but 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 when you have a group that works and hears each other and feels each other and trusts each other then anything can happen anything can happen yeah i mean costume malfunctions can happen in uh, the strings can break on the cool toll it, <laughs> it doesn't matter we know we know how to make it all come together because we have we have spent the time to to get to know and trust each other and i it's it's been a real blessing yeah yeah you'll get to see these dancers who come from they're not all okinawan dancers they're not all modern dancers yeah, they're all from all over. So, but have come together and and have been in my classes at UH, but also have brought to the table some very very um, rich experiences of their own. So, uh, we'll we'll you'll see them in a couple weeks. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna give all of you a really quick homework. We're gonna play the uh, one more trailer for the show. I think. Um, this opportunity for you folks to explain uh, your feelings about this show uh, will definitely make this show sell out on both days. I, I don't have a doubt. <laughs> and um, But my homework to you while this trailer is playing is when we come back together right after the trailer, I want all of you to have one phrase or one sentence on telling people why they should come to see this show. <laughs> and and it can't be what she said. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, let, let's uh, give everyone uh, one more shot at uh, what's coming up on February 26th, 27th, and we'll bring all of you back for your last comments. excited uh, I know my takeaway from all of this is you know the idea that uh, a lot of times music and arts reflect where we are in the in the present and you know traditions are of course traditions at what point are new traditions created has always been a question for me uh, so but let's hear what your thoughts are uh, and how and why people should come to the show we'll start uh, we'll start where Derek had to wait to the end of the uh, end of the hour and a half. We'll start with Derek and we'll work our way back. We'll go from uh, Derek to Norman to Kenny and then finally with Yuki. So go ahead, Derek. Uh, I think you should come because it's gonna. It's not going to be anything you've heard or seen before. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no matter 
what your experience, it will leave you with something to think about and will give you something to feel. What he said. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, well, one thing that, um, you know, kind of along what you were just talking about, John, is something that Yuki said early in the process and um, that I, I, I always think about, you know, she said that artists, um, especially creative artists and performing artists are first responders. And you'll see in this show really um, this sort of stance about reactive, reacting to to the changes around us. You know, we had a, we, yeah, it's, it's we had a long time to um, react. And a lot of things happen in, in the process of what we're doing. So yeah, to, uh, this would be a space that will um, engage that, I think. and. And for us too, it's going to be something that we, <laughs> both uh, both performances are going to be something we probably never heard and saw before either. So <laughs> come experience that with us. <laughs> All right, Kenny. Yeah, I think uh, yeah, I agree with uh, both what Norman and Derek said. In um, these kind of collaborations, it brings people from different backgrounds together, and uh, to me, it gives gives hope that. Um, people can work together and, and create rather than destroy and to um, give people hope and inspiration and, uh, uh, you know, a way to go about healing because the world definitely needs healing. Uh, nature needs healing. Uh, we all need healing. And uh, uh, it's not that we have the answers, but it, it just offers one, uh, one way to um, work together and, and, and it, I think if if we can do it, then governments should be able to work out things. I, I don't know if we should have our faith in them so much, but um, you know, I I just think in general it, it gives people um, kind of a, a hint that it is possible, and, and not and there's no reason to be you know too too depressed about the situation because there is hope. Mm -hmm. Oh, great. All right, Yuki Sensei. And they took away my words, every single one of them. But but here's what I, I here's my hope, is that people will come uh, without any preconceived notions at all about what they're going to see and to let the imaginary be clear and open and magical so that they can enjoy, hopefully think um, and go on to, to, to be better people, you know, cause that's, that's the thing about art. It, it shows you a side that maybe you didn't think about before, maybe you hadn't thought about, and maybe it gives you some choices some some different ways of looking at the world so that's my hope is to come with clear open no expectations just enjoy and be swept away <laughs> wow great how can you not buy more than one now you know um i mean i Again, and maybe another way of saying Yuki uh, that you create spaces is you you you're very adept at identifying spaces, and mm -hmm. so uh, looking forward February 26, 27. If you haven't bought your tickets yet, please go online buy your tickets. It's going to go fast. Uh, you know, we just did a Yuntaku live show that's longer than the show itself. Oh my but... goodness! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you know, I, I think it's a great opportunity. People often don't get to hear the. The, you know, really the uh, evolution of something like this. And uh, so I think that's really important. I want to thank all of you. I know time is precious. And uh, thank you for giving your time to Yuntaku Live tonight. So uh, again, ni fe ipe, ni fe debu to all of you. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for the invitation. Yes, yes. And of course, all of you out there, thank you for joining us on Yuntaku Live, episode 54. And... You know, we'll be back in a couple of weeks with Allison Yanagi, mm -hmm. Sensei Yanagi. And uh, again, uh, be sure to subscribe if you haven't. And uh, enjoy you. your evening. 
And thank you, all of you. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. <laughs>